This video is going to show you the process of taking a photograph and turning it into a lithophane that can then be 3D printed. 3D printed. Um, but before I show you the, the tool I use to create lithophanes, I wanted to show you what a lithophane is. So essentially, once you use the tool to convert it and you print it, when it's printed, it looks something like this, but when you apply light behind it, it actually looks like a photograph. So they're pretty cool things. So you'll, you know, if you do some Google searching, you'll see people make lamps, etc., out of it. Um, so there's a lot of you could make a something to hang on a tree behind the light. So it's got to have a light source. People make um, night lights, but they're pretty fun. This takes a little more work, but um, once you get the hang of it, and if you're pretty skilled at modeling bases or frames to hold them, um, it's, it's a pretty fun project. So that's what a lithophane is for the 3D printing kind. Um, here's the tool I use. It's 3dp.rocks slash lithophane. And it's pretty easy to just tinker around with and play. Um, I just scrolled my mouse and you can see it zooms in and out. In addition, if I drag with my rail, um, with my left mouse button, it will allow me to tilt and I might use that later to look. And if you drag with the right mouse button, that does what we call panning. If you need to see, um, if you need to move it over to see a certain piece. So the first thing we have to do is you need to make sure that you have a photograph prepared. Um, it's best to have a black and white photo and it should have, you want to play with the light a little bit so it has good contrast. Um, I did another video about that using Windows 10 if you want to check that out. So I have my image ready. So I'm going to click images here and I'm going to go browse to select my image. And I have to go to where I put that. And it is in my 3D PQ. No, it's not. I should have kept that open. Here he is. Okay, so it's Smart Nephew 3. I'm just going to drop that in. That's the easiest way to do it. And let me just show that. So you can see the standard setting is to just make a flat portrait size. Well, I guess it would be landscape if the photo was landscape, but it detected that pretty well. If I scroll down a little bit, you can see there's other options. So if I wanted it to curve in, which I've never used because the light source needs to be behind it. So I like that the outer curve would kind of surround the light. The solid cylinder I've never used because, again, there's a light source issue. Um, so I've pretty much avoided these. I've either done it flat or I've used outer curve. Before we have a look at outer curve, um, we're going to go up here to settings. And the model settings is where you can change the size, the overall size of the lithophane. Because if you want it to print out at, say, 3 inches by 5 inches, um, and actually it does it in millimeters, so the size right here is going to have the longest side be 100 millimeters, and the rest of it will adjust proportionally. Um, so that would be 10 centimeters, which is about 5 inches. Now, one thing I do want to tell you is you want to set the size here because this will produce an STL, which will then you, will take you to a slicer to prepare for the 3D printer. You do not want to use the slicer to resize a lithophane that's already been made. So you want to determine your size here. If you're happy with a 5-inch height, in this case, it's about 5 inches. You can keep this at 100. At 100. Um, if you want to make it bigger, then you just play with this slider. But be careful because they take a long time to print. So especially if it's the first time doing it, I wouldn't go bigger than 100. Um, you might even actually want to go smaller to see how it comes out. Um, the thickness I tend to keep at 3 also. Um, I'm going to turn on a border so you can see what effect that has. So I'm going to put a 1 millimeter border. Um, this determines the thinnest layer, so where your picture is the most white, 
um, it's only going to have a 0.8 millimeter thickness. Again, you can adjust it, but the thicker you make it, the harder it's going to be for light to go through. Um, and I typically don't touch these things. Actually, I'm going to check out and see what base stand depth does. I'm going to put that to 5. And we'll talk about curve in a minute. Um, but for now, I want to go back to the model so you can see the changes I made. And just to remind you, I added a border and I added a base stand. So if I go back to model, you don't see any of my changes. You have to click refresh. So refresh gives me those changes. I'm going to use, I'm going to drag my right mouse button to move that a little bit. I might, whoops, I'm going to zoom out a little bit and then I can turn it to the side. You can see that base stand that I put in, it's actually not very much. It's just a little lip in front, which is I think why I haven't used it before. I've modeled my own. Now the border is super thin too and pretty hard to see. So I'm going to go back to my settings and make the border bigger so you can see what it is. So I'll go back to model settings. I'm going to really increase the border. I, I've never printed with borders, but it's good to see what it is. Um, I'm going to turn this up too. Okay, so again, you make the changes here, you go back to model, and you click refresh. And so now you can see the border is much more prominent. Sorry, there. The border is much more prominent. It would come out just plain text. So it's almost like printing a frame with the lithophane. And if I turn this to the right, the reason I don't like the border stand is because it only puts it on one side. Let's go back, but I know you can put it on the other side. So I think if I were to use a border or stand, I would put it on the back. So let me go back to model settings. I'm going to turn this border back to zero. And I'm going to change the base stand depth to negative 30. And then again, go back to the model, click refresh, and it sho shows you the changes I just made in the settings. So if I circle this around, you can see the stand is in the back, which might make more sense, especially if you're not using a curved lithophane. Um, but I'll be turning that off again because what I usually do is I, I make something to hold the lithophane. Um, I've made a box before that the lithophane slides into, and then I can put the light source inside the box. Um, but I want to I scroll down here and show you the outer curve. And again, I can hit refresh. I'm not sure what it's going to be like. Sorry, I forget my commands for this. I'm not sure what it's going to be like with that stand in the back, if it even is still. Yeah, see, it doesn't have the stand in the back. So it's just this curved um, lithophane, which would stand on its own and gives a nice little place to put maybe a tea candle or something. Let's, whoops, let's scroll up a little. There, now we have more room. Okay, so if I go back up to the settings, uh, model settings, and you can see that it completely ignores the base stand depth when you give it a curvature. Um, and the standard curve is whatever's there, but if I turn this up, I'm going to, this is not a good idea, but I want to show you what happens. If I change the curve to 180 degrees, and come back out to the model and refresh it. And then, so what's happened is it's really bent the curve around. So at one point I thought, huh, maybe I want to make a fully cylindrical thing. And you wouldn't want to do it this way on a, on a normal photograph. But if I give that a 360 degree curve, and refresh this. So 
it wraps it around a full circle, which is a really cool effect if you have a properly prepared photo. I may do another tutorial on that. But for a single photo, you really don't want to do this because you're not even seeing, that was a pretty cute dog, but I can't see it all at once. And, and because it was, say, a 3 by 5 photo, it's really wrapping into a skinny cylinder. What, we, what you would actually want is like a long landscape type photo with several images applied. But for now, if you are going to use the curving, um, I would stay with the default curve. Um, which in this case would be zero because I chose the curve model. Um, and you could use, you could change that a little bit if you want it to stand up stronger. Like maybe I'll set it at 30. Um, and I'm going to go back to model. And when I refresh, it's much more reasonable and you can still see the picture pretty well. So, um, actually... Yeah, maybe I need a thicker curvature, um, but you get the idea. I'm just going to zing down into image settings, um, and actually, I typically keep positive on. So let me refresh this. You can see what it does. Oops. Refresh. Okay. So I didn't realize that my negative image was on. And what that meant is the darker parts were printing thinner. But now that I have the positive image on, the lighter parts of him are going to print thinner. And when the light shines through, it'll look normal. If you set it on negative, it, it could come out like you see with negatives of old-fashioned photographs. So that setting was an image settings. I should have checked that first. Um, so keep it on positive image. Um, if for some reason you wanted your image mirrored or flipped, you can do that here. Um, you can tile it. So, um, you know, experiment with these settings. I'm going, I'm going to keep this mirror image on so you can see it. And I'll go back to model. And I'll go back to refresh. And then you'll see that she's now facing in the other direction. So that's kind of a cool feature to have. So really what you'll be using the most, come on, are the model settings. Um, and you want to check image settings to make sure it's on positive. And I really haven't used these other things. Um, we can have a look at download settings. But um, my computer's not cooperating much anymore. Um, at this point, oh, there you go. So we'll ignore those for now. So I'm going to go back to the model. I'm pretty happy with all the settings I have. And really, you just click download. It opens up um, a dialog box. You're going to want to save the file. So once you click Save, it will open a folder where you can navigate where you want to save to, which should happen soon. Or maybe. I clicked save, I clicked OK. Oh, I think it just went straight into my downloads folder. So um, if I come up, if I go to my PC and then I go to my downloads and I will sort by date modified, you can see, whoops, the same one downloaded twice right here. And my computer has a 3D, a 3D builder installed, so it will show me what the image looks like. And it's really hard to tell here whether it's going to come out nice, because the next thing you have to do is slice it. Um, and I might do another video about that. But 
I talked a little bit more than I meant to, but again, I encourage playing around with it and coming back and refreshing each time and you can see what's happening. But it's a pretty cool tool. I encourage you to check it out.